monster. I'm your number one fan, 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 fan. Now clear your minds. You know what scares you? It has from the very beginning. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Look at zombies have entered the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Midnight Monster Corner Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Corey, and alongside me is my good pal, Tony. What's going on, Tony? How much, dude? How you doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. So, this is, sadly, our last episode of the Slasher series. Yes. It's, 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 it's been a fun three months, man. Very it's, bittersweet, man. It's been a blast. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed every, every review. I mean, I always do enjoy the reviews but this is this is special to me because you know slasher films are my favorite subgenre so this yeah. is like this is this is very bittersweet <laughs> yeah it's uh it's kind of upsetting kind of sad yeah but i mean look at the bright side okay so we're going to continue to do these every year right yeah uh, that's that's the hope hope that's behind the- it so look at it this way we, we only got like nine more months before we're back into the slasher series again <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm counting them down. It seems so far away. Yeah, I will be counting them down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but folks, before we get started into this uh, roulette episode, I uh, just wanted to give a quick shout. Um, you are watching the Midnight Monster Corner podcast. Um, you are watching it on YouTube. Uh, if you uh, would like, uh, check out. We are pretty much everywhere else. iTunes, uh, Spotify. Um, anywhere you can think of listening to a podcast, we are there. Just go to the search engine, type the Midnight Monster Corner podcast, and we will pop up. Also, uh, join us on our Twitter account and I believe Instagram, TikTok, and the main one that we, um, involve or get involved with, uh, as far as other people and stuff, um, is our Facebook group. So head over there. It is a closed group. Join or ask to join, we will let you in, and just have fun and join the discussion, guys. Um, But with that, let's get into this last episode, man. Do it. So, so first and foremost, how how have you been, Tony? Oh, man, I've been super busy, Corey. Thanks for asking. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) No, I have been, man. It's it's been uh, pretty crazy lately, helping my mom move. You know, she just moved into a new house, so helping her and her husband move all their furniture and everything around. And, you know, that's, that's been, you know, a, it's been a daunting task because they, they really have a lot of stuff and they have stuff in storage. So it's, you know, it's more or less, you know, work, work, work and, and pushing heavy and, and, but, you know, I, of course, you know, it's my mom. So of course I'm glad to do it. I'm glad right. I can help. I'm really glad I can help them, especially my mom, you know, her wrist, she can't, she can't do all that, man. So she needs a uh, Chris needs help. So I've been doing that. Um, work has been kind of sporadic lately, but um, you know when I do go, I go you know nonstop, and you know it's been busy, busy, busy. But I think late now it's going to start calming down a little bit. You know, I've been taking a break on watching a lot of stuff. You know, I've been doing watches for the reviews and everything like that. But like extracurricular stuff, you know, I haven't really been able to check out i really want to start getting in on some 2021 watches and and watch some newer stuff um i want to check out spiral and you know movies like that i want to see the quiet place too i want to check that out Mm -hmm. um i can't wait for the new candy man i know that's coming out this weekend i believe so i'm I'm excited about that one yeah i'm really looking forward to that especially with jordan peele involved i wish he was um uh well i know he's producing it but i kind of wish he would be directing it but uh he he did kind of push it off to somebody that that can handle themselves so i'm really looking forward to it i've seen i i hate watching trailers but i did see the trailer for this one and Mm -hmm. the look and the feel it it feels like a really good remake so i'm pretty hyped Uh, about this one yeah i i saw the uh i saw the trailer and i saw kind of like the apartment complex that it takes place in yeah. And it, it just honestly reminded me of like that old, like dirty, kind of grungy area of, of Chicago, you know? 
Because I believe, yeah, yeah, Jabrini Green, man. Yeah, so, I mean, that it, it just reminded me of that, you know. That's that's pretty cool. I don't think that exists anymore. I think they tore all that that uh, that apartment complex down. Um, but the, this looks similar, and it, it, or at least from what I've seen, it, it, it kind of, they captured that really well. So, I mean, from what I've seen, it looks like they're doing it justice. So, I'm excited. Absolutely. Me too, man. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I've been looking forward to it since I heard about it being made. So it seemed like a long time to get to this point where we're at with uh, the new Candyman. I've been chomping at the bit to see it. So the fact that it's here now, I'm, I'm really, really stoked. I want to check it out. And of course, Halloween Kills. I cannot wait. No. Looking wait. forward to what they're going to do next with that one. Um, you know, that might be my first theater going experience. And a year and a half. I mean, it's been a while since I've been to the theater. So actually, now that I think about it, it might be two years since I've been to the theater. It's been a while. So that might be my next uh, uh, venture to the theater. I mean, I've, I did the drive-in and stuff like that, but not not actually going to the movie theaters like that. That's I might, been. I might I might con the wife into to going to uh, the drive-in for that one. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm, I can't like recommend uh, the Big Mo enough, which is local to us where we're at. But it's it's mm-hmm. such such a fun experience, especially when you take the kids. You have the kids out there. It, it's it's awesome, man. There's playgrounds. There's so many things to do. It, it, it's it's a blast. Um, like I said, I never never experienced it before until the you know last year. So opening my eyes to the to the drive-in experience was something to behold and. I really, really enjoy. No, not last year. Uh, two years now since before COVID. So that was. Uh, I, I highly recommend it, dude. If you can, if you get a chance to do that, I definitely suggest taking the family out there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, Are yeah, you- uh, yeah. Things things have been pretty crazy here, and I I uh, I get where you're coming from with that whole moving bit because yeah, the hell with that. No, honestly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly we've we've we talked a little bit about moving ourselves and um you know I, cool. I told i told my wife that pretty much i'm ready to like settle down and basically move into our forever home because i don't want to move again yeah. uh, i did i did a lot of moving around when i was a bachelor you remember that um i don't want to deal with that anymore <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I got too much crap to move i don't want to do it that's anymore. all out of your system now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, when, when we move, that's I think going to be it for us. So, right. Understandable. Yeah. Well, that, well, you know, back then you were moving yourself and your stuff. Now you have a family, and and you have to move more. So, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> my, <laughs> this go round on my higher movers. Ah, <laughs> there you go. That's the way to go. That's the I'll way to pack, go about it. I'll pack everything up if they just come in and carry the crap for me. It out. <laughs> Load it up for me and and get it in the new place yeah um but yeah man you ready to you ready to get started ready to close most this definitely. bad boy most definitely <laughs> so um so yeah so uh i went i went a bit newer on this route what about you i stuck to a more um a more classic film let's just say that okay so we got yeah. we got separates again. Yeah, yeah, it's not modern. It's it's a it's a it's an older film. Okay. Well, I, I will say I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of give a quick shout to this this film because uh, so yeah so I was I was kind of surfing Tubi for new stuff because pretty much all my slasher films in my collection I've seen and I wanted to stay true with the roulette episode of watching something I've never seen before and giving an honest review on. Um. <laughs> So, so yeah, so I, I typed in slashers, this one popped up and it looked interesting to me. Uh, it was a film from 2009 called late fee and, Hmm. uh, and it has our boy JD Brown in it, you know, from the Adam Albert film. So I was like, Oh, holy shit. What a cool connection. Um, yeah. So I watched this and I don't know if I would classify it as a slasher. It's, I believe it's even on IMDB as a slasher. Um, but I just I don't classify it as a slasher. I, I can see you, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have fun at all with this film. 
I think I, I think I told you that the best part of this film was me nodding off and getting a small nap in between segments. Yeah. <laughs> when that's the highlight of your of, of your watch, or if that's the highlight of the whole thing, that's that's not. Mm-hmm. No, no. Like I said, I I don't believe it had anything to do with being. I mean, so the, so the premise the premise behind this film is it's a couple who want to rent films on Halloween because what couple doesn't want to rent horror films on Halloween? So they go to this place that apparently exclusively has just horror films, and they walk in and they speak to the devil. Essentially, he looks like the devil, and um. <laughs> You know, he's like, he's like, well, we're closing early because of the Halloween party. And they were like, oh, well, you know, can we rent this movie? Can we rent like, just a couple movies? And he, he allowed him to come in. And then just so happens that the two films that they want to rent, he's like, oh, you can't rent these. These aren't even supposed to be out on the shelf. These are ultimately rare. You cannot rent these. And uh, so the, they're, they're adamant at, on renting them. And um, so he finally allows them to rent them. And basically they go to sign for it and there's like this fucking like 200 page contract and he's like, you can just skim through it. And I mean, obviously, okay. So what does it sound like? You know, he's signing his life away and he goes, he he literally signs the book at the end. Right. (laughs) As he signs the book, it's like all of a sudden the pen just like gives out and there's like no name there. It's just fucking straight blood. And he's like, oh, man, this pen is bleeding everywhere. And it's like, come on. (laughs) So they get back home, and then they go to pop the movies in, and all of a sudden there's trick-or-treaters at the door. And they realize that they're not going to have time to really watch these films. Oh, might I add, um, they were supposed to return these films by midnight. Otherwise, there's going to be an extreme late fee. That's what it was called, an extreme late fee. So. So, so then next thing you know, it starts the movies off and you're literally watching the movies with these people throughout the entire movie. It is honestly so fucking boring <laughs> watching this because the, they were made to be like crummy, like really crummy and crappy, cheesy B horror films in which you have to sit through and watch. And it's pretty unbearable. Right. <laughs> It's bad. Um, so now you're at the end of the movie, and they realize, oh shit, it's five minutes past midnight. Oh, we're gonna have to deal with that extreme late fee. <laughs> Next thing you know, there's a brick being thrown through their window. The whole, basically, everyone from that party is now there, and the devil comes in, kills the couple. The end. <laughs> That's it. <Thank> you. <laughs> like I was hoping for more acting from from J D. Brown in it. So that. Shouldn't happen. I gave it a two and a half out of five stars. It's, I will never sit through that again. That was pretty bad. Damn. <laughs> it's pretty rough. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if I would classify that as a slasher or not. I, I can see why you didn't consider that a slasher film. Yeah. Hey, I mean, based on the cover, I mean, it certainly looks like one. I mean, the cover will kind of, it's like pretty cool. I mean, it's. Yeah, pretty, the cover looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, a, the the only the only thing that I gave it a two two and a half star rating on was based around um, the cinematography was actually pretty decent, even in the crummy B films. Uh, mm-hmm. The gore the gore was kind of cool, um, and the the soundtrack was actually pretty decent. That yeah. was about it. <laughs> so the acting was god awful, and I think it was intended to be. Uh, you know, kind of cheesy and um, tongue in cheek, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but it just, it, it really was just made the movie a worse experience, really. Yeah. It was like that we're winking at the camera, right? Like, you know, we, you see what we're doing here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, this pen bled everywhere. Yeah. And it was actual blood that spilled out. I'm done. It's, it's, it's fascinating that they would take a premise to where you have to sign a contract to rent movies. <laughs> yeah, like there was no typing on a computer, nothing. He's just like, write down your address and your name, and then sign here at the very last page of this 200-page book. Yeah, that's that <laughs> seems a little bit excessive to rent some tapes. <laughs> yeah. 
the place the place looked cool and i'm wondering if it wasn't part of um you know the you know the film uh rare flicks uh, the film company rare flicks mm. um it actually had that hanging up outside of the movie rental place oh, so i'm, cool. I'm kind of curious as to if that was the production company or not i mean that wasn't the production company that put out the film um but when they started the movie when they started one of the movies off uh it had the you could hear it having the shriek show um sound well yeah that's pretty dope it. yeah pretty dope. so I, I think it was a really just a, a neat little nod and maybe it was you know obviously it was an independent film um but i just died i didn't care for it <laughs> <laughs> But if, good, if you don't want to take my word for it, it is on Tubi for mm -hmm. free. So go check it out if you want to it can't take a nap. <laughs> if you want something to fall asleep to, I highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a shame about J.D. Brent. So, so he didn't get really a lot of screen time in that one? Mm -mm. No, it's probably what yeah. elevated. He's, and, he's it was, cool. and this was back in 2009. So this is kind of like the heydays of when he was acting, you know? Yeah. So, because I don't think he does too much anymore. No. I mean, I, I, I've seen I, some, I've seen where he's been involved with some things, but he's been really low key. Yeah. Very under the radar. It's interesting. So, um, I, I would think he would be kind of more, I'm trying to think if he was more on the production side of things, um, even back then. But um, I know he, I know, like I said, he he was cast in a few film, uh, like Adams films, for for instance, uh, like Cemetery and um, Crossbear, of course. But um, I'm even kind of even the Burning, he was in the Burning too. Yeah, I'm kind of curious if he or kind the of burnt. Been, sorry, not the Burning, the Burnt House. Burnt House, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious if he kind of backtracked with just mainly sticking to producing or mainly sticking to the more production aspects of uh, working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I don't know because I don't have really do a lot of social media stuff. So I haven't been able to keep track. I don't follow him on this or that because I don't have any of that. So, well, I don't, I, I don't think he's really on social media anymore. I know I know I can get in touch with like Adam on Instagram because yeah. um, him and I talked like just last year. So I'm, I mean, maybe I can get in contact with J.D. Brown that way, too. Kind of curious to see what he's doing. Yeah, what he's up to. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he's he's like I said, he's he's got a passion for, for the genre. So I mean, follow up what what he's doing and what he's been involved in would be yeah, definitely a um, good thing to look into. Mm -hmm. Well, but yeah, so that's my that's my rant of the episode. Rant of the episode. There it is. Got it out. <laughs> got it out. <laughs> it's out. It's yeah, done. You want to watch for the slasher roulette episode that didn't technically you know fall into the category of being a slasher but you ended up really despising <laughs> <laughs> well you know the parts that you you know <laughs> mm -hmm. i think honestly i think honestly if it if it was a short a short film I mean, I get why they did this, the segments of the two movies. Um, but I, honestly, I, I, I felt that if they had just shortened those just a little bit. Yeah. And, and I, I, didn't, I didn't spend an hour watching these basically two short films within this movie. Uh, maybe 15 minutes a piece. And just overall, the whole film be shorter. I think I would have <laughs> actually enjoyed it better. Dense the runtime a little bit, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I mean, extended runtime with the premise that's very light and not too much behind it can get boring for sure if, if mm -hmm. it's not properly. Um, and I, and you know, using a word like despise, it's kind of a, like a strong word, but it sounds like it was just a boring, you know, pointless kind of plot and 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 you know, watch. That's a cool that's concept. I just wish exactly. it was executed a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, I'm a sucker for any any kind of shots in, in a, in a, you know, <laughs> a video rental store. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. always that kind of stuff. I, I always look out for it. And I'm not going to lie. This place, this place did look really cool because it, it like reminded me of like manifest. Yeah. Like, right. it, it, it had the shelving like manifest and everything. I was for like, sure. oh, that's pretty cool. 
it throws you back. I mean, especially you, dude. You used to work at a movie gallery, so I know it's got to kind of bring back oh, a little yeah. nostalgia for you to see that kind of stuff. I mean, I mean, I don't know if they had VHS in in the store. I mean, if they it was all DVD VHS kind of mix, I don't know, but it, it sounds cool either way. I, I <laughs> dig on that shit. I love it. I miss it. I miss those days. Kind of wish they would make a little kind of small comeback where we could just go. I mean, it's so, of course, it's it's more convenient to rent and stream, you know, new movies that come out and this, this, and that. But something about the art of going to a video store and searching through, you know, tapes and covers and, and picking out something to watch, it's, 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 it's lost art. And I, and I kind of wish we would, even if it's like a little niche thing, just go back to it and, and enjoy it because you just, I mean, you think about it, and it's like, that's gone. I mean, you just don't get that anymore, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Unless you live in a big city or something like that. But not around here, man. There's there's nothing like that going on. Yeah. There's no big, there's no big, well, what would you say, retailers anymore, really. Yeah. You know, if anything, it's maybe some straggling, you know, mom and pop rental places. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I did see a, um, an article, and it's just getting off on a quick little note, but there's a, there was an article on uh, my newsfeed the other day about a man. I think he was a, a local man in England who owned his own um, video rental store, which there's very little of those even there. But he was able to secure and save about 20,000 tapes that were found in a storage, well, multiple storage lockers that were bound to get taken to a landfill because of, you can't recycle tapes. So they were going to a landfill and he actually saved them and picked them all up to take to his video rental store. So now he has a vast inventory. So now he has to expand his store, but his store is thriving is doing well because a lot of these younger kids, these, um, they're not millennials, but they're, you know, the next generation are kind of getting a kick out of going to his store and picking stuff out. You know, that feeling that Mm -hmm. you had, you would go to a, a store and pick out tapes and stuff like that and actually put the tape in and watch it's it's kind of like what's going on with vinyl, how vinyl's really popping right now. Yeah, it's People, making a comeback, yeah. Yeah, making a comeback. Well, now, you know, VHS and stuff like that's making a comeback, too. It's kind of the same way. So yeah. I saw that article, and it just kind of warmed my heart a little bit. I was just like, oh, that's so cool. A little bit of a positive note, you know, mm-hmm. from the, out of the world that just would love to do something like that. Yeah. That was, that's pretty cool. But like I said, I'm a sucker for anything in a video store, you know, any shots in a video store, even if it's just like a couple of quick sequences or whatever. I'm, if, if they're in the movie, I'm, I'm already hooked. I'm digging yeah. it. So, oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Setting's always good there. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty cool. Um, it was so, like I said, I just, I wish things were a little different with that film. But yeah, that, the shots in the store was pretty cool because, like I said, not only was it just, uh, you know, like a movie rental place, but they were having a Halloween party inside there. So there was like a whole bunch of decorations and stuff. And it was pretty cool because like there was like there was like one moment where like uh, people were dressed up as certain, you know, in certain costumes. And they were like walking up, giving suggestions to some rare stuff like um, this guy dressed up as like Wolfman. He walks up and he's explaining uh, what flesh for was it flesh for the beast? Yeah, was and stuff, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool." It's a little nod to that movie. Kind of died. Did I? Yeah. I did like indie horror. Like I love that. Love yeah. the name. stuff like that, man. Uh, it was it was a cool little touch. Guys making these movies know what they're talking about. They're fans like us. I mean, they they add that shit in there. Yeah. Wink, wink. Like, hey, like we know our shit, just like you guys know your shit. <laughs> so enjoy. <laughs> I dig that shit too. That's cool. That's cool that they added stuff like that in there as well. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of uh, just just um, don't fuck in the woods. The same kind of thing in the that little quick se- sequence in the in the video rental store where the guy's helping, you know, and they're talking about screen queens and this, this and that. I like shit like that. I enjoy it. A little was nods it, in there. Was it don't fuck in the woods? Yeah. Don't fuck was in. It? Okay. Cause I remember that. Oh was yeah, the, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, it was the heavy set guy, the stoner guy that went with them on the trip. Yeah, yeah, and he kept like talking all the horror film knowledge. Yep, yep. I love it. 
Yeah, I dug that. Yeah. Well, man, uh, do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? Uh, well, I mean, you kind of did a thing. I'll, I'll uh, hop in and, and do mine if you want. Okay. So I checked out, and what made me want to do this one is because I kind of mentioned it when we did our last episode. Um, I talked a little bit about this film, and, and talking about it, just just mentioning it kind of got me intrigued to, to pop in and watch it again because I love the overall theme of this movie. Um, it's very prevalent, and I just wanted to go back and revisit it. I mean, it, it hadn't been that long since I watched it, so it's not like I had a lot to to pick from. But, you know, watching it in a more critical eye is, is always cool, and then taking a little bit more out of it watching it this time. Uh, but that is a movie called Final Exam from 1981. And this movie is very, very simple uh, as far as the plot, of course. I mean, slasher film, so you know you're not going to get an exorbitant you know, plot. Um, basically, it's <clears throat> about a group of uh, college students that are um, finishing up their final exams. So the semester in school is over. Um, a lot of people have already left to go back home. Um, you know, so there's a ha select handful of kids that are still, you know, taking their final exams and, and whatnot and just, you know, talking to people and hanging out with friends and stuff like that. So the really... Right out the gate, you get a sense of like the school is like starting to be become more abandoned and there's not too many people here. And I like that about this movie. It, it really you start off with, you know, a good group of people and then slowly throughout the film, it starts to weed out and there's less and less and less people. And I love how it starts and ends that way. Um, of course, because of the body count. And then, of course, the, these students are leaving. They're going home to their, you know, their family and, and whatnot. So we get what really our main character, uh, Courtney, who is a very well-to-do girl. She's um, very smart. Um, she kind of sticks to herself. She's very quiet. Uh, but she has a, a group of friends there and they all kind of get together and talk about, you know, the the stresses of the of the semester and you know we have one character who's uh who's this kind of like rich kid that's like oh well i have to I have to maintain a a c average or b average so i can keep my you know my parents paying for my car my car payment stuff like that so he's like i have to pass this final exam in order to keep that on my um on my final grade so he's uh he's the lead he's the head of a fraternity on campus and then there's a a fucking crazy scene that i swear you couldn't get away with this shit today there's no way there's a so they do a mock shootout in this film and like i said there's gonna be spoilers here i'm gonna be talking kind of in depth about the movie um but they have a scene where this van pulls up and these guys start pop piling out of the man van with ski masks and stuff they just start laying waste to people to shooting everybody you know there's People falling down and blood, you know, shooting out, squibs going off. Um, and everybody's like at, in a panic, of course, because, you know, that's what, what happens when there's a shootout. Mm -hmm. So people are running, hiding, you know, getting behind stuff and, and trying to, you know, stay out of the fire, line of fire. And um, we find out that this is all like a, a, a fraternity prank so that they can distract everybody from the the lead, the head of the fraternity to kind of cheat real quick on his exam and then put it back in the pile because there's supposed to be um, aides in the class, aides, <laughs> like teacher's aides in the class, <laughs> teacher's aides in the class watching to make sure people aren't cheating on their exam. So this distracts them and the whole student body that's there with that going on and then he just marks his stuff and gets his answers on there and then turns it as an exam so it's his elaborate ruse to for him to cheat mm -hmm. so it's like wow did you just but with the way society is now you would never see this shit in a movie again like it's just mm -hmm. not gonna happen. <laughs> even then i don't know how the fuck they got away with it it's pretty ballsy but uh yeah they and then of course you know one of our characters so we have another character that follows courtney around his name is um Radish, his nickname's Radish. Of course, his name's not Radish, but everyone calls him Radish. I don't know what his real name is. But um, he's like the overly nerdy, really smart, you know, uh, like well-to-do kid that's, you know, 
stick to himself too, but he, he really, you can tell he doesn't really have a lot of friends. People kind of use him to, to get this and that, like he works for the coach in, uh, you know, keeps inventory on the equipment and stuff like that. And they pretty much dog him out, you know, especially our two, like I said, our, our main, our main guy that is the leader of the fraternity. And then he's got a, like a little crony that follows him around named wild man. Who's probably the highlight of the movie. The guy's funny as shit. He's hilarious, man. He's anytime he's on screen, I think of like ogre from, um, uh, Revenge of the Nerds, yeah. Revenge of the Nerds, I think of Ogre when I think of him. He's just like that big, <laughs> dumb, like, but he's really like brass and like he's fucking like giving Radish hell and beating him up and stuff like that. Yeah. You can tell they have like a, like that kind of relationship. But Radish is, he's almost like the Randy character before Randy. Like he's very aware of what society, there's a, so in the opening of the movie, we have a couple that's in typical horror movie fair, like just out and make out point, like together in a car. And, you know, he's trying to get some action. She's not really having it. She's like, why do we have to be here? And this is that like, this is this is not a good place to be. And he's like, well, you know, we spent all or, well, I can't spend my it's hilarious. He's like, I can't keep spending all this money on hotel rooms. <laughs> it's like. She's like, well, you don't mind spending money on your beer. And he's like, well, you are happy to drink your share. So they're like giving each other <laughs> shit. And it's, it's funny. It's funny little dialogue back and forth. And um, basically they the killer pops up and just snuffs him out. Like he, he pulls the guy from. So he's got like a soft top convertible and he has a top up. So the killer jumps on the car, slashes through the convertible top and then pulls the pulls the guy out of the car gets him on the hood and just starts stabbing the shit out of him. And wow. <laughs> yeah, right out the gate. Like the first, uh, the first, the intro to the movie that this happens. And then the girl, like it freeze frames to her screaming and this, this and that. And then the credits start rolling. But um, yeah, that this happened at a previous college. So Radish is talking to Courtney and Mark about it. He's like, did you guys hear what happened at, um, I think the other college was March college. He's like, yeah, there's a, there was a couple that were snuffed and it was, and it was like really, really brutal. And the guy Mark's like, Oh, there's just two people. That's, that's hardly news. And this, this, and that he's like, no, it was news because of how particularly brutal the killings were. And this is that. So they're just going off and she's like, you guys are really morbid. How can you like make light of this, of this shit? And he's like, he's like, listen, this society is crazy. Like there's full of psychos out there and they're, and they're going to kill and they're going to, they're going to cause mayhem and violence. And that's just what we have to live. That's the society we live in. But mm -hmm. people always, so this is a movie to me that people always say that, Oh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of final exam. I don't like it. I don't like it for this, this, that reason. But the main reason I always hear people don't like it is because there's no explanation to the killer, why he's killing. He's got no motive, no backstory, no anything. It's never, we never find out who the killer is. We never find out anything about him. And people, you know, the main people I've talked to or have come across and have reviewed Final Exam say, hey, I don't like that. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I would like my killer to have a motive. I would like to know who my killer is. I would like to this, isn't that? To me, based on what is said in the movie and, and the dialogue that's said, I mean, I, I wrote, when I, was, when I was writing my notes for this, when I wrote down, all of the dialogue that seemed to benefit the overall theme of this movie to make it make sense. And there's a couple of, um, there's a couple of, uh, um, inserts that I took of dialogue. And one of them is, is our, our character Radish, who is very prevalent and, and very privy on what's going on and, and, you know, death and, and all the stuff, statistics and whatnot. He knows about all that stuff. And he says, to, uh, he says to Courtney, he says, senseless murders are a modern phenomenon. Can I help it that people are crazy? These type of murders, ha these type of murders happen all the time. You know, people, people um, wake up in the, you know, in the morning and, and just decide to go off and snuff people. It happens. Like dialogue like that is basically the makers of this movie saying, hey, there's a point to this movie. Violence is senseless and it happens. There's mm -hmm. no explanation of why. 
There's no, you know, we all don't always get like a motive. We don't always get that. People are just crazy. People are nuts. And that's the, and that's what this movie is trying to emulate or is trying to get across to the audience. Like, don't always think that you need a, 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 a backstory and everything wrapped up and, and tied up in a bow and, and set in your lap. Like, you don't always get that. People are nuts. People just get up in the middle, you know, they get up one morning and they decide, hey, I'm going to, you know, go kill somebody or, I'm going to go massacre a, mm-hmm. know, a apartment bill. I don't know. People do crazy shit. And that's basically what this movie's trying to say. And I, and I never got the argument to where people are like, there's no point in this movie. This movie's pointless. No, there's a point. They're making it. You're just mm-hmm. not seeing it. So that's what I, I've always liked that about this movie. It was trying to say something. And the director, from what I understand, he kind of, and this probably the movie's main downfall he tried to shy away from like the over over violence in this movie he he kind of wanted to make it more tame as far as the killings there's not a variety of killings in this movie there's mainly stabbings and and you know stuff like that but it's very it's very bloodless there's not a lot of blood there's very little gore if any like it's not a bloody gory film whatsoever and Compared to the stuff we've been watching and covering on this uh, summer slasher series, that's that's saying something because we've we've covered some gory flicks in this one, mm-hmm. but not one of them. This is a very tame slasher film. Um, the body count's pretty decent, you know. Like I said, not a lot of variety to the kills, but there are some really cool shots in this movie. Like I said, I love the uh, the fact that the throughout the film, the college is becoming more and more mm-hmm. like abandoned and. There's not a lot of people around because everybody's leaving. So it, it feels very desolate and and just spooky and, and creepy because, I mean, there's you follow a couple of characters around campus and they're trying to navigate, you know, get from point A to point B, get stuff done. And like I said, you the cool thing about and I noticed it this time around, I never really paid attention to it before, but in certain scenes, you could see the killer like stalking around. And if you notice it in the back, you'll see it in the background. He's his kind of silhouette. He's kind of watching the watching the kids and, and the students and kind of stalking them. And I love that. Like that's a that's what I really enjoy about slasher films is when they have a stalking aspect to them. And this one did. There's one particular shot which I think is one of the best shots in the whole film. Um, when our character Wildman is going, so they're trying to score some um, pain pills to kind of sell off as like speed. To, to students so they can actually make some money. So he breaks into the locker room in the gym to try to take the uh, pain pills. They're trying to pass off a speed. So he breaks in, he comes back out, and they're on a basketball court, which there's a giant overhead scoreboard, and there's a shot of the killer underneath the scoreboard in a silhouette, and I think that's one of the best shots in the whole film. It's really, really cool. I love it. And that sequence with Wild Man is probably one of my favorite sequences in the whole film, where he he's actually he runs up on the killer. He he tries to take him on, and the killer just beats the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. And uses the workout equipment. Well, the cool thing is, and even a little touch is when he's knocking Wild Man around. You know, he knocks him to the ground, and you see the pills fall out on the floor, and they just run. It's a nice little touch, like oh yeah, he's taking pills and stuff like that. He's trying to. He's trying to get one over on these students and, and whatnot, but he's getting what what's coming to him, essentially. And the, one of the most unique kills in the movie is he kills Wildman by stringing him up on on a weight bench and like choking him, which is pretty it's pretty nifty. But he really just he whoops his ass, dude. And I know the killer. I checked out some trivia and stuff like that. The killer was actually like a trained martial artist and a stuntman, so he knew how uh, to fight. And he knew how to take people down, and he was on. It was on full display when he took Wildman down. Like and Wildman is a big dude too, so he's not a pushover. He's he's pretty big. So, I mean, he's a football player, star football player on the team. So he <laughs> he's no pushover. And this dude handled him like like he was nothing. <laughs> Whooped his ass, man. So that, that I mean, and then the cool thing was the bodies get stuffed in the locker, which I thought was pretty cool. It's very off-putting that these bodies are just just pushed and, and shoved into this locker. They're all distorted and whatnot. Oh, man, it's very it's very jar it's very off-putting, but it's cool. It's a cool little touch too. 
Um, there's one character that you don't think is going to get killed in this movie, and sure enough, they do. And it's like, holy shit, I didn't think they were going to do that. That was pretty surprising. That kind of, you know, if you watch it for the first time, that'll kind of take you off guard. You'd be like, damn, that was, wow. Okay, okay, movie, <laughs> what we're doing here. <laughs> but what I do want to say about this movie, um, another benefit to this movie, the final girl that we have here, Courtney, I wrote down in my notes that I really believe she is one of the most underrated final girls in, in horror. Like wow. she's, uh, yeah, she really is, man. She's got a great scream. Matter of fact, her scream is so good that the filmmakers dubbed her scream for other actresses in the movie because it was so effective. Wow. And she holds her own too, man. She's a, she's a pretty smart girl. Um, you know, very well to do. She she's a prototypical final girl where she's like very you know innocent and pure, and she's not you know out there scamming people and and trying to get one over on people, not using her you know looks to get what she wants and everything like that. She's a very cute girl, but she's very you know to herself and very she kind of I don't know. I'm not going to say she's a too, goody two shoes, but she uh, she kind of watches everybody else go about you know, taking advantage of people and this, this and that, and, and just kind of watches it from afar. It's like, Oh, this is what the college life is all about. Huh? He's really <laughs> good. It's almost like this, is our first semester in college. Like she's a freshman almost. I don't think, I don't know if she is or not, but it almost feels that way where she's really naive to the whole experiences of college and, and what people do. And, you know, this is the big leagues almost. And people are going to mm-hmm. take advantage people are going to use what they can to get what they want and cheat and steal and this and that. There's a lot of that stuff going on with this drama with college about college life, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, I, I always dig a college themed slasher film anyway. So yeah. this, this is one of my favorites. I, I, I enjoy this movie a lot. I will say that, man, it could have greatly benefited from more gore and a variety of kills, but you know, the cinematography, the shots, the shot compositions, uh, stuff like that, I really dug. I love the fact that there's no motive for the killer. There never is at the end. I mean, at the end, it's done and over with. They don't get into a backstory. There's not a sheriff that comes out, well, this killer, well, he used to be abused and, and this, this, and that. And he broke out of a mental institution. None of that. You don't get any of that stuff that you've gotten plenty of in other movies. It's just a simple stalk and slash movie. Where this killer comes in and starts picking off students, and there's no rhyme or reason why, other than people are crazy and people are going to just kill. Yeah, basically, the that's basically the theme. <laughs> so, and it's got a that's great cool. poster too. As a matter of fact, I have the poster in my in my movie man cave. It's it's I love it. It's, I, I, <laughs> I'm a big fan of like slasher film posters where the killer's like silhouetted with a with a like a, a weapon. Mm-hmm. Dick- man i love it i got a yeah. madman too because because it's got the same thing silhouette of madman with his axe i mean i just dig it it's cool <laughs> very classic yeah uh, that's uh that, that's one thing that always drawed me into that film was the case it's amazing yeah it is so yeah. cool and first time i found it was at the flea market believe it or not that that wow. movie well yeah i couldn't believe it i was this was big into my trying to find every, every slasher film I could to, to put in the collection, and I found that at the flea market, and I could not believe it. I think could I not. found that. I think I got that at Manifest, actually. I bought it so fast, dude. I was like, <laughs> looking for this everywhere, and I snagged it up. Couldn't get that money out fast enough. And it, it's definitely one of those films that if you're used to, if you love your blood and guts and, and just buckets of blood and, and just gratuitous i mean there's there's nudity in this i mean it's got it's got it's got i wouldn't say a cool killer because you don't know really a lot about him and i'm not saying that's a that's a knock on the film but it, it doesn't have a killer with a personality because you don't get that but he's got i mean he's got a butcher knife which is classic mm-hmm. you know you've, you've seen that before um he's a he's kind of a big dude he's he's imposing so you get that as well um, you have your final girl, though. You have a wonderful final chase that leads to a great climax where I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I mean, this is spoiler territory we're talking about now, but the killer 
actually, and this blew me away when I when I looked this up. So there's a scene where they're in a a tower almost in, in an abandoned part of the of the school where the final chase is taking place. So she our our final girl Courtney is up the tower and the killer's chasing her up the steps. And one of the so the coach comes to the school because he's supposed to be picking up the uh, security guard, which that's another thing. I don't know if the security guard is a victim or not because we see him and it's established that he's a drunk and he's in his like security like truck. And he's just like, you can't tell if he's passed out drunk or he's dead. Like you just don't know. It was one of our characters like asking him for help, help, help. And he know he's either passed out drunk or he's dead. So I don't know if he's included in the body count or not. I have no idea. Never really established. But so the coach comes back to pick him up so they can go hunting. Well, he hears Courtney screams in the top of the tower. So he gets his bow and arrow that he used to fronting to go up there to see what's going on. He finds out that this guy is harassing her and he's like, hey, man, he's like, he's, he tells me he's like, you better hold up or I'm going to I'm going to end you or something like that. And he shoots the bow or shoots the arrow at the uh, at the killer, and the killer catches the arrow in midair. It's fucking insane. And I'm like, okay, well, that had to have been, like, a doctor or something like that. He couldn't have done that in real life. As a matter of fact, that dude did do that. He caught the arrow in Wow. Midair. Amazing, dude. I thought for sure that that was edited to where it looked like he, he caught it, but he really didn't. There's no way. No, the guy was trained to do that. It's amazing. It's wow. so cool. You never, I've never seen that before. That's incredible. But he caught that shit and then used the arrow to kill the uh, the coach, which was that was pretty pretty brutal. Um, wow. And he, like I said, dude, Courtney don't. She's uh she's very underrated, man. She when the killer's down, she takes the opportunity to you know <laughs> to try to finish him off, and it's it's pretty brutal. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. Dude, it's 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 cool, man. It like I said, I it's a very simple movie. It's, there's mm-hmm. not a lot of thrill to it. It's not flashy. It's just a standard slasher film. But I did get I did get a little bit out of it with the radish character talking about how murder is senseless and things like that happen around around the world, and no one can ever be prepared for it because it's random. It's mm-hmm. random violence, and this with yeah. this movie relishes on is random violence I, I even said it in our i think it was sweatshop that we did that i talked about this and that's what got me wanting to watch this for this the roulette episode was to kind of embellish on that fact a little bit more and talk a little bit more about the movie and I, of course i wanted to end you know the series on of co- of course the golden year of slasher and horror in general was at 1981 so i had to do an 81 flick <laughs> no doubt in my mind that that had to be done so this just to me seemed like the right time to to talk about it and kind of you know get get, get a little bit of a leeway on it and have people check it out and hopefully entice somebody you know a couple listeners right. or whatever to check it out because I'm like I said man if you're going down the slash a rabbit hole this is the kind of film you got to see to mm-hmm. compare contrast to other movies to to see what works what doesn't I think the the one of the main downfalls is that you of course could have used more gore it would have been really great if the violence would have been amped up because it really would have hammered your point down more of senseless violence mm-hmm. if the violence was more prevalent it would have made more sense Definitely. but it's not yeah. a perfect it means it's not it's got its flaws i mean for sure and i'm not going to ignore it just because i have a, you know a a history with this movie i, I watched it a long time ago back in the early you know, when I went down that, that rabbit hole, this was one of the earliest films I saw. I saw this and Maniac and a movie called uh, Don't, Answer the, Don't Answer the Phone. Yeah, Don't Answer the Phone. Um, Don't Go in the House. Like This is the early stuff I watched when I was starting to really, really go down that 80s, more or less, even though a couple of the, well, Don't Go in the House didn't take place in the 80s. It was more like 79, like, the, like going into 80, but Mm-hmm. That's what the kind of stuff I was seeing at this time, and I, this is one of the early ones that I checked out. So I wanted to go back. I mean, I watch it. You know, I don't. I wouldn't say multiple times a year, but I watch it just about every year to check it out. I mean, it's it's fun. 
It's been uh, it's been years since actually I've seen this film. You got me kind of wanting to watch it. Yeah, well, like I said, it, it it's it's got a theme and it sticks to the theme, and I and I give it credit for that. It doesn't shy away from that. It and and I think the director knew he's going to lose out on some of the audience if he tones down the violence and he doesn't. But I think he wanted to make a film to say something, and I think mm-hmm. that's what he did with this movie. And I just don't think it was. Even at the time, I don't think people got it. I don't think they understood the subcontext that was there or the subtext that was there. I don't think, I still to this day, I don't think people understand it. There's a couple of reviewers that pointed it out like, yeah, this, this movie's trying to say something. People just aren't, aren't paying attention or they just don't get it. But it's, there's clearly a message that they're trying to get out there. And people, some people just aren't getting it. Yeah. That's why a lot of people, you know, a lot of mainstream you know, audience members. It's like they have to have stuff spoon fed to them. Like they don't get subtext and, and theme and, and stuff like that in movies. They have to have something told to them. They have to have everything handed to them. They can't. Just, no, man, you can't. Sometimes you have to go into a movie and you got to use your brain. You got to think. You can't just be spoon fed everything. Mm-hmm. It's not a movie that, I'm not saying this is a deep intellectual movie and by any means. It's a slasher film. It's It's standard fare, but they are trying to say something with the subtext. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, I enjoy it, man. There's, there's good stuff here to be had. There's, I mean, I've talked a little bit about the characters. Uh, Wild Man's always a cool character. He, <laughs> he said, so when they're in the exam room taking the exams, of course, Radish is the first one done because, you know, he's brilliant. And when he stands up to go, people are like, like really? And he's like, "What? I can't help it. I'm brilliant." <laughs> and then he turns his he turns his in, and then Wildman leaves right afterwards, and he burps, and everyone's looking at him. He's like, "What? I can't help it. I'm offensive." <laughs> <Just love that. laughs> he's a great character, man. They're both probably the standout characters in the movie, to me anyway. Awesome. They're so. I mean, well, of course, from the Final Girl too. I mean, she's she doesn't have a lot of standout stuff. I mean, she's not. She has that heavy dialogue scenes and whatnot. You know, there's scenes where she's trying to, she's got a roommate that's really attractive, really attractive girl. She's, you know, sleeping with the one of the professors to get good grades and whatnot. And of course, Courtney looks at her like she can just do anything she wants because she she has the looks. Everyone's mm-hmm. going to give her anything she wants. And she's like, yeah, I'll prove it. So she she's got her bags packed and stuff like that. So she calls to she, the random dudes walking down the hallway. She's like, "Hey, can you help me out?" She's being ditzy and cute, and this, this, and that. So they would be like fawning over her to just take her bags, pack her stuff for her, and help her take her out to take her take it out to the car for her and stuff like that. She, she doesn't have to live a finger to do anything. <laughs> and she's like, "See how easy it is." And Courtney kind of, she's like not jealous of it, but she's just like envious of her. Like she can just do that. She's got the. Mm-hmm. Uh, personality to do that i guess courtney doesn't have that personality she's mm-hmm. not very flirty and and you know loose <laughs> or anything like that she's more uh she's got a good she's got good morals and stuff like that so she makes a good final girl right she's, not above, she's not above fucking a killer up either <laughs> i will say that holy holy shit <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, she doesn't have the looks, but, you know, at the end of the day, she could probably outsmart and survive oh. versus the other girl she's any day. She's definitely a smart girl. She's definitely a smart girl. And um, she, uh, like I said, she's got a great scream. Like, you think of Scream Queen, like her scream is one of the best. It's great. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I need to rewatch that. <laughs> It's fun stuff, dude. I had a good time with it. Uh, my my letterbox rating, I, I went in at a three and a half out of ten, or three and a half. Three, three and a half, half out of five. Three and a half stars. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Right on. Fun stuff. Yeah, man. All right. Any anything else you want to add to that one? Oh no, I did. Yeah, I did want to say. So Radish's dorm room, he's like the Randy character. So you see, I love it. You see on his dorm room wall, there's theatrical posters of horror films. It's like, that's so fucking cool. I love when movies do that, too. We yeah. were talking about with pieces. Yep. Not too long ago. like that. I love shit like that. He had a Toolbox Murders poster, oh, a awesome. Corpse Grinders poster, and um, I think a Hitchcock movie. 
poster. Mm-hmm. It was a Hitchcock. Maybe not. Maybe it wasn't. But it was like one of those early '50s kind of murder mystery kind of movie. I can't remember the title of the movie, but kind of like noticed Rear Window or something. Yeah, that toolbox mode, uh, two box murder poster in particular. I, I I really want that poster, dude. Yeah. I would love to put it in the in the room. So I'm on the lookout for it. So I saw that. I'm like, I love that. The artwork on that poster is so, so great. So great. Cool. I'm just like, and I, I wish I could pluck the poster out of, out from the screen and, and keep it. So I, want yeah. it. <laughs> I always like when they do that, especially like if you like, if they show like old shots of like uh, theaters or something. Right. Like out on the marquees, you know, and stuff. They've got the, the old posters out there. That dude, love it. It's cool. So cool. <laughs> I want a key for the room. Like, I want to put a poster behind him. That would be so cool. That would be neat. Yeah. <laughs> One day. Yeah. One day. I got goals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, you ready for me to get it in mine? Sure. All right. So, I watched a film. It's actually on Tubi. Um, I believe isn't final exam on Tubi. You know, I don't think I popped in my uh, Blu-ray to watch. Um, I think it might be though. I think I saw it pop up on uh, when you put in when you type in like slasher films. I think I saw mm-hmm. it pop up. I think I think it is on there. So yeah. be on the lookout if you don't have a copy. Go check it out there. Um, a- yeah, this this film. That I did. Uh, it's from 2018, um, and uh, it's a pretty cool film. It's on Tubi, and uh, it's called "He's Out There." Have you ever seen? Have you oh, seen this? Yeah, I have seen it. Yeah. Oh, you have watched it? Uh, yeah, I I had the uh, the DVD. I saw it on. I think I saw it on. Um, might have been Shutter. Either Shutter or it might have been Tubi. It is on Tubi. Or maybe on no, it was on Netflix. I remember it was on Netflix for a minute and I checked it out because it looked like a slasher movie. I said, mm-hmm. oh, I gotta check this out. And I watched it on there. And then I found the DVD at uh, Second and Charles. Oh, I nice. The, yeah, it was pretty cheap, too. It wasn't wasn't too bad, like three bucks or something like that. Oh, wow. But yeah, I enjoyed it. So I'm like, yeah, I want it in the collection. Yeah. So when I, I was like, yeah, I gotta get that. Yeah, I saw it, man. It, yeah, it's <laughs> good. Yeah, so I, I and you can kind of help me with this, but I, I consider this to be a slasher film. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely on that fine line of home invasion and yeah, slasher. Definitely, yeah, it's definitely got the uh, home invasion kind of yeah went on too. But and I can get into more of why I think it's a slasher film. So uh, the the basic premise of this film is um, you got this pretty well it's pretty wealthy or well off family. Um, and they have kind of a vacation home. Uh, you end up meeting your main character, Laura. Uh, is it Laura or Lauren? I think it's. That was Laura. I, yeah, I think it's Laura. Yeah, and, it's just daughter, I think, yeah. Yeah, and then she's got two daughters, um, yeah. and a husband, obviously. And, um, you know, pretty much, uh, they're going on like a camping trip. And at first, you kind of see that she's a little pissed off with her husband because. He's got to go away on a business trip, but then he's going to be there like at like midnight. Um, so she nabs up the two daughters and they go to this vacation spot, which is a pretty gorgeous vacation spot. Upon their arrival, she's having a hard time getting into the fence, which you meet your your red herring right away. Um, I love that because instantly I was like, oh, that that could be the killer. But, you know, because the, the whole time, of course, I'm sitting here still trying to figure out who the killer is in this film. Um, but yeah, so you meet your, your red herring, who's kind of this, this Southern guy and he's, um, uh, kind of, um, creepy in a sense as he walks up and he's like, Hey, let me help you get into this. Hey, like he actually knows how to get into the lock of the fence. And he was like, yeah, this thing's tricky. Like he's done it before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So. And then That's he goes on to spill this story about, um, yeah, his family used to live here before you guys, and uh, they had a son named Johnny, who wasn't all there, all there in the head. And then he just got lost, and no one ever found him. You know, and it's like it's like ah, uh, it's a little backstory to the killer right there. You know, so uh, 
<laughs> after or right before he, like they go to pull into the driveway um your 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 main character Laura uh, he walks up to her and he's like uh he's like so uh you hear vacationing alone with your mom and she was like and my husband's coming like she made it clear like she was getting yeah. great vibes from this guy too <laughs> <laughs> um but you know she goes in to unpack the the little girls they run off into the woods or they they go to like a swing set and then they find this yarn just kind of strung up in the yard and they start following it through the woods uh, and then they just find like this makeshift like tea party in the woods and it's like oh, that's not fucking creepy at all Very odd so, yeah yeah so they they uh they go in and um uh, uh basically they um they find cupcakes there the one girl eats the cupcake the other one doesn't um now later on through the film you're finding out that the one girl that ate the cupcake is now getting sick and throwing up everywhere uh and then she even finds like a piece of paper in her mouth that says hello so definitely getting creeped out vibes and the, the mother is just trying to figure out what the hell is going on so pretty much once the mother realizes okay somebody's fucking with us and she goes to leave the tires have been loosened up on their car <laughs> and the the car just basically turns on its side um yeah pretty much now she realizes okay there's somebody out here with bad intentions and it's lo and behold it's this guy johnny uh upon her figuring this out her husband's on the way um he finally gets there and the gate's locked again and he's having a hard time getting it open uh and then he starts calling his wife because now it's late at night and uh, pretty much um he follows like he follows another string off into the woods comes across the tea party again um and this time uh, apparently he was talking on the phone that's, that's something i didn't mention the killer actually was able to nab up the um the the wife's cell phone and mm -hmm. so he had that in the woods so he followed the phone as he was calling his wife's phone to the woods um and then that's when he realized that uh she wasn't there something was off you know and he actually gets killed off screen like you don't you don't actually get to see his death on screen um and that's something about this film there was just really not a high body count for this film i was gonna ask about the body count man because i don't remember it being high no no so and you don't you don't you don't like i said you don't get to see him die um it isn't until uh, at one point the girls are now really spooked and they don't know whether to answer the door or not and there's a knock at the door and everything and she hears her husband and lo and behold it was a voice recording of her husband um she goes out there and she sees basically like the voice recorder attached to a rope and the rope just starts falling and then all of a sudden her husband falls in front of her his mm. eyes are gouged out and his arms been cut off mm. uh, which was pretty strange yeah uh, so and then at this point they've now seen the killer and everything and uh, might I add, the killer is a really cool look. Um, he's got like this Maj Paj mask on. And I thought it was just really neat the way it looked and everything. Because he made it look kind of like a skull drawn on Maj Paj or something. But it was just really neat. Um, and then yeah, his, pretty unique. Yeah, and his, his weapon was pretty cool. Because his weapon was um, pretty much like a really long battle axe, essentially. <laughs> But it wasn't like it wasn't like super big. It was like small. It was like it had a hammer on one side, like a yeah, like a hammer on one side, and then the axe head on the other. It was pretty neat looking, actually. Like it was forged that way. Um, but yeah, so he he kind of just plays a cat and mouse game with the family a little bit longer, and then at one point, this is where you see uh, one of the kills on on uh, screen. It's pretty brutal, um, but at one point they're trapped upstairs and they see the creepy neighbor coming through the yard i don't know why he's there he's just there <laughs> and so they're creepy. trying to, they're trying to get his attention and they're like beating on the window and stuff and he's like i can't hear you i can't hear you 
And then finally, she just, I'm, I'm the whole time I'm sitting there on edge, like just break the fucking window and just tell him that the killer's behind him. And so she finally does. And he turns around too late, axe to the face. And it was pretty gnarly looking. But yeah, uh, long story short, uh, the killer ends up uh, capturing the mother. Um, and then the way he captures the little girls, that was a little unsettling. Because like he followed them up to the bedroom. And of course, they're like hyperventilating. They're, they're freaked out. They don't know what to do. So they're under the bed and he walks in. He knows they're under the bed, you know. He checks the closet and then he sits down and he's like, I'm not going to hurt you. And then he was like, and this is kind of like the end of the backstory of the killer a little. But he's just like, my name is Johnny. And he was like, and this is my house. This is where I grew up. And he was like, uh, I left. I went, I went hiding or something. He says something like that. Like he, he was hiding in the woods. Um, and then he was like, I'm not going to hurt you. Don't be afraid of me. And uh, the whole time he's like laying a jar of liquid down on the ground. And then he opens the jar up. And like the whole time you're seeing the kids like freaking out underneath the bed. And he's like dipping a rag in the jar. And then he like slams the bed up real quick. And then it's, um, it's chloroform. He, just, mm. he chloroforms the shit out of the kids. And it's like, wow, like he really did have malicious intent the whole time. Like I thought, I thought, okay, maybe he was going to be different with these kids. Maybe he wasn't going to harm the kids because yeah. then like the drawings that he did, you know, you could see like pictures of the, the dad, like he would drew all the dad with no eyes and his arm cut off. And then oh. he, he had a picture of like the mother with, with her arms uh, bound and her eyes missing stuff like that. And then there was just like a picture of the kids. Like he wasn't going to hurt them, you know? Um, but then uh, at one point, um, he actually uh, tells the kids that he, but before he um, chloroforms them, he's like telling them, hey, uh, you know, I've always been here. I've always watched you guys. Oh, and it's like, that's, that's fucking creepy. Like, so this guy's just been here hiding out, watching them for years, you know? And then finally he just makes his move. And, and it kind of goes back to, like you said, no rhyme or reason on why they just did it. They just did it one day. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but then, you know, uh, as the movie progresses, uh, the mother is actually still alive. She's just bound in the trunk of her husband's car. The kids figure out that the mother's in there. Uh, so they open up the trunk to free her. And the killer walks up, slams the battle axe right into the, the mother's ribs. It's Dude. like, oh, geez, well, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> right. um, but then the they they ended up, uh, he ended up putting the kids um, uh, basically on the lawn. And he started, like, measuring their eyes and stuff. Like, he was going to cut their eyes out and stuff. So. He, he did, in fact, have malicious intent. He was going to kill the kids. Because at one point, he actually like started sizing up the arm. And he was going to cut the arm off next and stuff. And uh, one of the neat touches was that he was like taking these body parts off these people. And then sewing them onto wooden puppets of these people. Around wow. the tea set. So oh, Yeah, that's pretty yeah. Cool. Very, <laughs> very creepy on set. I do remember that from the movie. It's, it just... Yeah. Of creepy ass scenes, a lot of just creepy ass imaging images. It's wow, it's it's, it's kind of hard, it's to really get. unsettling because it's yeah. like you don't really know who's in your backyard watching you. Absolutely, it makes you think, like, oh yeah. shit, I wonder if, I wonder if that kind of shit would be going on in my house. I mean, yeah, absolutely, dude. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so basically, the climax of the film is. Um, pretty much, uh, there is a, there's a battle scene between the mother and the killer because she's not dead. She just got an ax to the ribs and, uh, she ends up turning into a badass and beating the shit out of him. It doesn't kill him though. Cause at one point they go to drive off and the little girl's like, where did he go? He was gone. So, but yeah, that was, that was pretty much, I, I that was kind of the fast track of it. I didn't really want to go into too, too much detail because I didn't want to ruin too much of the film. Yeah. It actually, it's a newer film and it's pretty good. So, so what's your take on it? Do you think it's a slasher or more of a home invasion? I, well, 
with the lower body count, it kind of feels to me like a little bit more home invasion. Yeah. Because, like I said, if it would, if it had ramped up the body count just a, a little bit more, I don't remember there being, but just a it, few. It, it literally was two kills. Yeah. See, and one of them was off camera. Yeah. You know, it's, but, but with that being said, I mean, there's other aspects that say that that screams slasher film to me right, because we have you're killer. You're killer. Course, yeah. Yeah. And of course, there was no backstory other than. It was a kid that was lost in the woods. They never found him. That's it. I, I don't know <laughs> if there was... Were there POV shots in this movie? Mm. No. I don't know. No. Uh, okay. the, only, the only thing that maybe there was some POV on was maybe when the husband was walking through the woods. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the reason why I say it was more of a slasher though is because, you know, he obviously he had a mask on, he had a weapon and it's like, and it almost looked like, like a homemade weapon, like a makeshift weapon too. So I was like, I'm okay, that's, yeah, so maybe, maybe there was slasher as aspects to it, which gave it, I mean, it did give me the feel of a slasher film without, cause I, cause that it, it, for me, it's kind of a fine line between the two. Yeah. So, Absolutely, man. Yeah. And I mean, in in my opinion, I mean, yeah, yeah, nice body count is good, but if the story's good and the gore is good, the, the gore, gave, the gore yeah, was there. The story, then yeah, you really can look past certain aspects and really, yeah. really enjoy the film. I mean, like I said, it, it does, it did surprise me that it didn't have nearly as high a body count as I initially thought going in, especially with the look of the killer and you well, know, even the even the look of the cover was pretty cool because, like, it's oh, like, yeah. yeah, it's very ominous. Like he's like standing in the woods, and it's like him, and it's like dark too. So, yeah, I will say this film definitely had atmosphere. Yes, um, yeah, I'm a big proponent of atmosphere. And, and yeah, this was it. Took, it took place like it was literally like a, a a lake house. Yeah, and the yard in the woods. The scene where the, the two girls were walking through the woods following this yarn that was strung up everywhere like a spider web. Very I thought cool. that was I thought that was really just a cool touch. Yeah. You know. Very, very creepy, man. Just mm -hmm. a ooh, just makes your skin crawl thinking about thinking about that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So that, that was my movie. Like like I said, the cinematography was was fun because um because it, it was like they were capturing the sunlight coming through the forest and stuff as the girls were walking through. I yeah. thought that was a neat touch. And then on the lake, the the, the scenery on the lake was just gorgeous. gorgeous. So everything about this film was just fun to me. I loved it. And it really wasn't it really wasn't like a slow burn because everything progressed more and more as mm -hmm. the as the film went on. Uh, so it never slowed down. It was kind of in your face and just kept on going. Yeah. And like I said, I like the fact that the killer just kind of fucked with the family a little bit, too. I mean, he could at, at any point in time, like he made it known that he had been in the house while they were in the house, you know, because he had he made it known. Like there was at one point um, she went out to go to go get her phone out of the car and she noticed there was like a little gift wrap present in the back seat of the car and she opened it and it was her daughter's doll. Mm. I mean, that's it, the. And the doll was in the house. So, yeah. I mean, the killer was coming and going as he pleased. So he could have really killed them at any it, point in time. He's, he's fucking playing games with them. I mean, mm. just, yeah, baiting them, causing them to, to get really, really unsettled and, and scared. And, and that, that sometimes that gets, you know, these psychopaths off more than killing. I mean, just, just having the fear in people and having them, you know, in, in your hands. And it's like, that gives that makes them feel like they have more power than anything. I mean, mm -hmm. And that's a pretty interesting premise to play with in, in this movie. Yeah. But yeah. So my, my overall rating for it is four out of five stars. Oh, nice. Um, like I said, the body count really wasn't there, but, uh, looking past that, the storyline was fun. Um, it really didn't. There, there was really no moments for me to get bored with this film. It was yeah. just, 
one thing after another. And one one of the cool things I really liked was they explained certain things, mm-hmm. you know, why the husband was so late, stuff like that, uh, you know, to come. Uh, so there was like explanation to things throughout the film. The only thing that they didn't explain was why he was killing people. Yeah. You know, and that, that and and like I said, at the end of the film, he was gone. So, I mean, he could pick up and do this again to somebody else. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like strangers, like the strangers, dude, like the same thing. Yeah. Kind of actually this movie has a and it's a movie I watched kind of not too not too long after this one like i, I kind of watched them very close together kind of gave me the same feel but um i think we talked about this movie before hush remember hush mm-hmm. yeah yeah because that's another movie that it it's it's on that fringe where it could be a home invasion movie it could be a slasher movie mm-hmm. but it's got a really low body count too but it plays the horror so well and it, yeah. it has certain scenes that are shot that are just fantastic and it really does skirt that fine line between this could be a slasher film, this could be a home invasion film. I mean, you have mm-hmm. a killer with a mask, of course, it's like in this one. Very, very low body count, though. Um, I think around two people maybe in that one as well. Uh, I need to watch it again just to see how many people actually were killed. But I, I do remember it was, the body count was quite low in that one. Yeah. But very similar. I mean, it, of course, not, not played with the, you know, the string and all that stuff like that. That's a it's a nice little touch for a movie like that. But, yeah. um, yeah, the two reminded me kind of, they had similarities. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, man, that's, uh, that's going to be it for me though. Nice, nice, nice. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you have, do you have any, uh, anything you want to add? No, that's a, that's a good little flick, dude. I, I agree with you on that rating. Um, yeah. A lot of fun. Um, I mean, when you talk about we have kids in, in a horror film and it's a it's a pretty tense horror film and it you just yeah. don't know. I mean, sometimes people the main complaint is when you, when you have kids, like you know, nothing's going to happen to the kids because the, the movie's not going to be ballsy enough to do that. So it, it kind of loses tension for some audience members and stuff like that. But the way they do it in this one, I don't I don't remember them dialing back the tension or the or the unsettle of, um, the unsettling feeling you get where oh god they could they could hurt these kids in this movie you know yeah. it's what gonna, I re- what uh, I really liked about this film what it really captured for me was so the dad's dead mm-hmm. right um I think the oldest daughter kind of knew that the youngest one not so much right away yeah um when the mother was like trying to she was by the back door and the killer literally just busted through the glass, grabbed her and pulled her out. And there was this unsettling moment of these two girls literally standing in this kitchen, crying, hollering for their mom. Yeah. And it's like, that is so sad. Like, because like, as an audience member, you don't like, did he just kill the mother? Yeah. You know, and now these two little girls are there to fend for themselves. That, that, that was unsettling. Yeah. You know, being as a as a as a father, you know, that was like, man, yeah. that's brutal. Yeah. For and sure. So that was, and, and then of course they they went out. I I really liked that because he almost led them back to their mom, and then of course as soon as they found their mom, he was like right behind them with an axe, just right into her. Yeah. And, and it was like, oh shit! Well, that just happened. <laughs> that that's it. <laughs> So, uh, but, but, um, even when he was like sitting there, like sizing up their eyes and stuff, cause he was like sizing up their eyes and then like going to these wooden puppets and like carving the eyes out where their eyeballs would fit in there. And it's like, oh man, that's, I, I just, I remember like, like having, having empathy. Like, that's just so sad. Like, is this film going to be that ballsy? Yeah, but, dude. Yeah, you're on the edge, and you don't know. You don't know if they're gonna go that route or they're not. I mean, it's yeah. pretty uh, <laughs> pretty. It's pretty jar. I'm not say jarring because jarring seems like a negative every time you say jarring, but it's it's. You don't know. How to you don't know. Yeah, you don't know what to prepare for. Yeah. <laughs> you want to kind of have a feeling, but when it's structured like that, you just don't know what the fuck the movie's gonna do. It could <laughs> yeah. be like. 
whoa, like that huge. But then I again, mean, like, you've, yeah, you've seen movies like that though, where they're like, uh, "Killer's not going to kill those kids, and somebody's going to save the day." And yeah. then, yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. completely fucking shocked, and, and I think that's hooking the audience into being like. Through the whole runtime, just not knowing, just unnerved, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't know where this is going to go. And, and it's like I said, when you got them hooked in like that, they're along for the ride, then you win. You win the audience over. Yeah. So, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. But yeah. yeah. That was <laughs> good pick. Good pick. Yeah. Dig it. But, uh, yeah, man. You, um, you ready to land it then? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not really because I'm having so much fun with reviewing slasher films, but unfortunately, we have to put this thing to bed. So. Yeah, but, but guys, nine more months away. Yes. We'll be yeah. starting slasher series all over again. Oh, home countdown. No, we're going to have fun, man. We're going to do a lot of good reviews. I think me and you kind of discussed maybe doing um, Nature Run Amok, like animal, like killer animal flicks. Yeah. So next month, yeah, killer animal films. So that's, that's going to be, be a fun. fun one. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> definitely, definitely looking forward to that because there's a lot of bonkers, weird, how the fuck did they do it movies that involve animals and, you know, that un- no animals are harmed. Well, in most cases, no animals are harmed during the making of these films. <laughs> but no, we're, the, the fact that they were able to get away with what they were able to get away with, with, mm-hmm. with animals, stuff like that. It was a different. It was a different period in, in filmmaking. Let's just say that we were mm-hmm. able to do a lot of shit that that would not fly today. <laughs> no, That's definitely not. <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. Yeah, but well, folks, um, we appreciate you listening to our reviews on this roulette episode. We are sad that slasher film series is coming to an end. Um, but like Tony just said, we, we are going to be doing uh, animal horror films, animal kill films. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a fun one. Yep. Um, make sure you like, share, subscribe this, uh, and let your friends know. If your friends are slasher films, you might want to go back and look at the last three months because we've done nothing but talk about slasher films. So <laughs> It's been fun. It's been a wild ride. Yes, it's been quite emotional. <laughs> first one, first one in the books. First one. Yes. So. But, um, yeah, with that, uh, make sure that you join our Facebook group and uh, join the discussion there. Um, it is a closed group. That's nicely. We'll let you in. Uh, but with that, Tony, you got anything you want to add? Nope. That was perfect, man. Like I said, join the group. Get in on the uh, discussions that we have. I mean, we have some great discussions get, that get brought up and good questions, good uh good topics get covered and stuff like that it's fun we have a good time so yeah please join anytime you want just join in um ask for an invite we'll we'll accept just you know just keep it civil and we'll all have fun and a good time definitely definitely but with that guys later later